Welcome to another installment of Central New York After Dark. Radio personality Hank Brown and syndicated columnist Joe Kelly will be keeping us company. And we also take a look at our very own Marty Specialty Greeting Cards. Stay tuned. Welcome back. This is Hank Brown. And Mr. Brown. Uh, Hank, you lived in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia? I was born and raised in Philadelphia, but I'm in upstate New York. I came here for a year, and it's been a long year. It's 39, and I love it up here, to be honest with you. A long, long one year ended up with 39 years. Uh-huh. I get younger and bolder every day. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get interested in the world of broadcasting? Well, I uh, always was blip when I always liked clowning around. And when I was in the service, and I... Uh, was in St. Albans Naval Hospital when I got back from Korea. Everybody was telling me all the time, why don't you go, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I said, well, I don't know yet. We'll find out. So one day we went over to uh, watch a bout at Madison Square Garden between a guy named Rocky Marciano and, a, and this other guy I thought was pretty good. His name was, uh, what was his name? Do you remember his name right now? No, not, not this moment. Ezra Charles. I told you before, you had two demerits already, Marty. Oh, yeah, Jeez, okay. I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> But I saw that and I said to myself, this is what I'd like to do. I think I'd like to get into broadcasting. Went to school up there at Fordham, and at that time Cambridge was uh, starting a school. And they, of course, Syracuse had Newhouse, and Fordham did not have a broadcasting school, so they started in Cambridge, which is part of Fordham in Times Square of New York. Went there and I did the two-year course in about six months and got myself in a an associate degree from Fordham, because it was the first year they grandfathered everything. And I took an audition, and the guy says, there's an opening, and he says, I'd like to hear you guys all do different things. So we worked for about four minutes, everybody, in a, in a telephone booth, like. And when we got through, the guy said, I like that tall guy from Philadelphia. He says, I'd like to send you up to uh, Little Falls, New York. And he said, did you ever hear of it? I said, no. He said, did you ever hear of Utica? Utica, no. I said, wait a minute, Utica Blue Sox, Philadelphia, the Whiz Kids, Eddie Sawyer, Footsie Cavallaro, Granny Hamner. I said, I heard of Utica. So I came up for a year, and it's been 39 years. Just recently, your experience as the voice of boxing down in Atlanta. Tell us about it. It was the most exciting, most thrilling thing could ever happen to anybody. And you know, you can do a lot of things. We've done the wide world of sports. We have been at the World Games, the Empire State Games worked with Howard Cosell for over nine years but when you say the Olympics it is something they can never take it away and is so special and NBC of course they had everything pretty well sewed up and tied up and they did a great job as far as we were concerned the only thing they did NBC we thought for sure they'd have better coverage on boxing and they gave very little coverage on boxing and the Associated Press picked up a story because they were interviewing me and they said <coughs> It seems sad that NBC had done such a great job in the Olympics, but they kind of put boxing on the back burner. And I said, you know, I found out what NBC stands for. Everybody told me it was National Broadcasting Company, and I told the guy from the Associated Press that NBC said no boxing coverage. And they picked up across the country, and that next thing I know, everybody was making a big joke of it, but it was really something. And as far as experience, I think one of the funniest experiences I had with me Demi Moore sitting next to me, which is quite an experience, and she had the crew cut, and she had this tight yellow pair of pants on, and yellow high heels, and a lot of cleavage V cut here, and I said to myself, my God, she's a walking mortal sin. And then I looked at her, and I said to myself, gosh, she's pretty. So we, she sat with me for three or four bouts, and all of a sudden, Bruce Willis walked in, and he said, Excuse me, but where am I sitting? I put my arm around her like this. I said, any place but here. And everybody started to laugh. And then it was just unbelievable. I had a chance to introduce everyone they gave us the green light for. We had from Muhammad Ali to Shaq to Jack Nicholson to five governors, two queens. And it was fantastic. And the biggest thing was, of course, the bomb scare. And there's so much false rumor about that. They said the bomb scare was a, a bomb went off at the park. There were three bombs there, not one, but three. And the next morning I had class at 10.30 for the languages. And one thing they wanted, they wanted the pronunciation of the guy's name, had to be right, and the name of the country that he represented it. 
And the funniest part is that I went in there was about 22 minutes after 10. I knew I only had about five minutes to get to class, and I tested out the microphone. It was good level. All of a sudden, I saw this big redneck Georgia trooper, and he came up and he says, get out of here as fast as you can. He says, because there's a bomb here. So he put me outside at about 25 after 10, and I was out there till 10 or 12 in the pouring rain. And when I came back, they found the bomb under a gurney next to the ring, and it measured 22 feet, one inch where I was sitting. So altogether, there were 10 bombs, not one. But I'll tell you something, the thrill, the bombs, the meeting of the people, doing the Olympics, and introducing and being the, the voice that introduced the, the medals, the gold, the silver, the bronze, the national anthem. It is the most thrilling and exciting thing that has ever happened to me. And a lot more has happened because now I've been asked to do the Pan American Games. And I know for a fact that I'm going down to St. Louis, Missouri for uh, the Irish bouts. And the Irish bouts will be against the U.S. And that's going to happen on March 17th. And then I got a phone call the day that I left and I was supposed to call the next morning, which I did, and I got a call from Mr. Axelfort, and I've been asked to do the Olympics in the year 2000 in Sydney, Australia. So I did very well, opportunity knocked, and I was there, and, and I'll tell you, it's enthusiasm and being excited and liking what you do and doing what you like, and it just worked out terrific. Marty, here's a look at Hank in action in his studio on his morning show. Well, let's see that right now. <laughs> boo hoo, I'm telling my mommy on you. I got a 45 on this. Yeah. Extended to play one of those old timers, too, on each side. Yeah. Notice we, I, the show, I even bring dancing girls on it. Why don't you pick this up? She keeps on dancing with everybody. She knows every song. <laughs> Do you know this one, too? Boo hoo, I'm going to tell my mother before. on you. <laughs> she did tell my mother, and I denied it. I said it was my brother Bob. Ooh. I didn't do it. It was. He knew better, trust me. <laughs> yes, I trusted you. We had twins. Okay. <laughs> I handle the jokes. Sorry. <laughs> this is actually what this is at home. They're hearing music at home. They're hearing this. Kathy Lee Gifford, you know, how to be you. But while that's playing, I lower it down and I I cue this record. So when that word Then I bring it back, you'll hear the noise. Now this is all set to go. That's called cueing the record. Because at home when we introduce, I say this is Sinatra. We don't want dead air. No dead air. Boom. Exactly. It goes that's on right a, away. That's a and you know, I've been doing this for 39 years, and every day it's still a thrill for me to come in and come in and, you learn and play. New oh, absolutely. But I, see, I'm a guest in their home. I, I ride with them in the car. I'm their friend. We talk about everything. I give them news. And you know, when you're in the car, you, you can't watch television. You can't read the newspaper. I'm with you. Put the seatbelt on and keep the speed limit. I get nervous. I'm up front, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's how it works. And I know that, or I feel I know that I do more than my share to bring happiness to this community. And I do love upstate New York, and I'm always bragging about it. And I think uh, Howard Cosell one time said it so well, he said, your two biggest boosters for Utica, New York, are Tony Filippelli, one of the best referees in the country, Tony Filippelli and Hank Brown. They always brag about Utica, New York, and the Italian wrestling from the people. Mm -hmm. And I really believe this is, that, that's the, re the reward and the award I want to get. That I, I was good for the community, 
and the community was good to me. That's good enough for me. Yeah, well, he was right. Mr. Brown, God bless you. So are you right. Thank you very much. Okay. There you go. That wasn't bad, huh? No, not so bad. Let's take a look back at some of the more memorable moments of the past 11 years on Central New York after dark. Yes, let's do that. My seat, one, one minute while I flush. Huh? By the way, I got me a, a, a bohemian, what? Bohemian, bohemian stuck down here, up to, up to its knees in the mud. P.S., please send me the pill box and tumbler. That will do, that will do. I'm sorry I couldn't uh, make out all of your, uh, your, your writing here, but that will do about that uh, bovine, bovine. Bovine stuck out of the mud. Well, the best way to do that is to have an old tractor or some old pickup truck on the farm tied around the animal's neck and put the vehicle in reverse, yank a couple times. If the neck don't break, you'll get the animal out of the mud. That's from Christopher Keeble. My next letter comes from Willard Fitch. Bridgewater, New York. Bridgewater, New York. That's not far from here. Dear Marty, I got me a bovine, another one. What is this here with these people here, the animals? A bovine stuck up to a sneeze in mud. Please send me my protective gas mask to it. <laughs> that will do. Looking at you, Willard Fitch. I'll do that. I'll do that. I, uh, this is the one hell of a butcher. And I got the same message for you, Willard. Is it tie some kind of a vehicle with a heavy rope around the animal's neck and put the thing in reverse and yank and yank and don't give up unless you hear a snap. And it won't. If you hear a snap, it'll be the neck. And if the neck snaps, well, then you might just well leave the damn animal there. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. That takes care of our fan mail. You might think that being a successful talk show host would take up all of Marty's time. Not true. He's just recently opened his own line of Marty specialty greeting cards to cover the entire spectrum of human emotions. For example, our obsession card. I've been watching you. Then I know the route you take home from work. And our disappointment card. You've always been a winner, son. At least you were before you decided to throw away your God-given talents. Oh, boy. Here we go. You're going to like this one. Because your friend's ailment is minor doesn't mean you shouldn't spend $1.75 for a card. I'm sorry, sorry you're feeling so terribly dizzy. Greeting cards have always been available for the new bride and recent college graduates. But until now, there has never been a line of cards for people who leech off their friends. I have a few of them and refuse to work. These new loser cards are perfect for anyone who's living on someone else's couch. For example, I'm not very good at saying things like this, but could you lend me $700? Sure, pal. Oh, we have another loser card here. Just a note to let you know I'm going to have a lot of lowlights over for a visit at all hours. Uh, one of another one of Marty's beautiful array of cards here. Everybody loves somebody sometime, even dangerous psychopaths and deranged criminals. That's why Marty offers a variety of greeting cards, two and four cycles. Here's a couple of nice ones. Without you, my life would have no meaning. At least now, I have a focus for all my pent-up rage and hostility. Wonderful. I have a few cycles. Here is the true cycle card. Wishing you a speedy recovery so that I can try to run you over again. Wonderful. Nice mother-in-law card. 